Hi guys, it's Jarek from Course of Polish. Welcome to Noun Declension Workout. Today we are going to decline the word park, which means park, in all seven cases, both in singular and plural number. If you don't know anything about noun declension, please go to the description of this video. I've added their links to my website and to my book where I've explained this topic in details. In the description you can also find a link to a PDF file which contains cheat sheet for this workout. You can print it and use it during our practice. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the declension. In order to decline a noun we have to know which uh, gender it has. So park is masculine gender, so we are going to use masculine endings. Here you, you can see all the endings that we will use and uh, how to add these endings to a noun. You have to take the stem of the noun and then attach the ending at the end, obviously. But what is the stem? The stem of a noun is the noun without the vowels on the end. So in case of uh, our noun, park, the entire word is already the stem because it ends with a consonant, k. It doesn't have any vowels on the end, so we don't have to remove any endings in order to get the stem of the noun. Okay, so let's start with the declension in singular number. The first case, nominative case, is the basic form of the noun that you can find in dictionaries, so it's, it's just park. We don't have to do anything. That's the basic form without any endings. The second case, genitive, gives us two options. We can either uh, use the ending u or the ending a. In order to decide which ending we should use, we have to follow the rules which are attached to these endings. So let's read the rule number one for u ending. Uh, use this ending for inanimate objects although there are many exceptions which use the a ending. So uh, in our case, park is not an animal, it's not alive, it's an animate object. Uh, so we have to use this ending o. And as this uh, rule says, uh, there are some exceptions which use a different ending, the second ending a. But, uh, well, you have to learn that by heart. If an, a noun uh, is an exceptional noun, you just have to learn. And if you don't know if the noun that you are declining is regular or irregular, just use the regular ending and hope for the best. So uh, we are using the first ending, u, and the form of our noun in genitive singular number will be parku. Parku. Okay, next case, dative. Here we have one option, one ending, OV, but there is also a rule that we have to read. So the rule says that some nouns take an irregular ending O. So again, you have to learn by heart if a noun has irregular ending, but for most of the nouns just apply the basic regular ending. So if we apply this ending to our noun, we will get the form parkovi. Okay, let's move on to accusative case. Here we have two options. Either we have to use the same form as in nominative case or the same form as in genitive case. Let's read the rule number three. Inanimate objects have the same accusative and nom nominative form. Okay, we already know that park is in animate, so we have to use the form from nominative case. So it's just park. The next case, instrumental. Here we have just one ending, M, with an optional E letter. And also a, a rule number eight. If the stem ends with K or G, then add additional E between the stem and the ending. Okay, so now we know when to use this optional E. We should use it uh, if a stem ends with K or G. Our stem is Park, on the end we have the consonant k, k, so yeah, we have to use this additional e. So the final form uh, for, in, for instrumental case will be parkiem, parkiem. Without the e, it would sound like this, parkem, parkem. Try to listen uh, the difference, parkem, parkiem, parkem, 
Arkem. That's that's the difference. All right, let's move on to the locative case. Here we have again two options, ending e with an apostrophe, which means that we should uh, soften the, uh, the last consonant of our stem. You can read about softening on, on my website. And the second ending is u. Let's read the rules. So rule number five, use this ending for nouns whose stems end with a hard consonant, except for k, g, and h. So hard and soft consonants, uh, you just have to memorize by heart which are which. Here is the whole table. In our case, uh, park ends with a hard consonant, k, but this rule says that uh, all the hard consonants except for k, g, and h. So we are not going to use this ending because of the k on the end of our stem. So let's see the rule for u ending, rule number six. Use this ending for nouns whose stems end with a soft consonant or k, g, h. So here we are, park ends with k, so we are using the ending u. So the final form, form will be parku, parku. All right, and the last uh, case in singular number, vocative, it's uh, easy, it says that we should use the same form as in locative case, so again it will be parku. So all the forms for singular number are park, parku, parkowi, park, parkiem, parku, parku. Okay, let's start with the plural number. The first nominative case. We have two options, e, e ending or e ending. Let's read the rules for the first ending. Use this ending for nouns ending with a hard consonant. We already know that k is a hard consonant, so that's the ending that we have to use. Let's read the, uh, the other rules. If the noun is a personal noun, soften the hard consonant. So park definitely is not a person, so we don't have to follow this rule. And the third rule, some nouns describing titles or relations. Take all the ending. Okay, so it doesn't matter with park noun. So we have to apply the first ending, but there are two options, e or e. So how do we know which option we should choose? So the rule looks like this, literally. So if the stem of the noun ends with k, g, ch, j, sh, j, ny, l, sh, ch, z, j, sh, l, sh, ny, z, ny, or y, <laughs> use e. Otherwise, use e. So you just have to memorize it. I'm sorry. So in our case, we have k on the end, so we have to use e. So the plural uh, form for nominative case will be parki. Parki. Okay, let's move to the second case, genitive. Again, we have two options, uv or e, e. Let's read the rule for uv. Use this ending for nouns ending with a hard consonant or c, z, y. So k is a hard consonant, so we have to use uv. So the form will be parkuv, parkuv. Okay, next case, dative. Here we have just one option om, so it will be parkom, parkom. Accusative, again, we have two options. It can be either the same as nominative case or the same as uh, genitive case. Let's read the rule number seven. If the noun is not personal, use the nominative case form. Okay, park is not personal, so it will be the same as uh, nominative case, so the form is Parki. Okay, next case, instrumental. Here we have just one option, ami, so the form is parkami. Same with locative, just one option, ach, so the form will be parkach. And vocative, it's the same as nominative, so the form is parki. So all the plural forms are like this, parki, parkuf, parkom, parki, Parkami, 
parkach parki. Okay, so that's the entire declension of noun parki. Now, uh, as a bonus, I've prepared five example sentences which use this noun. If you want, you can pause this video before I tell you the Polish sentence and you can try translating it, translating it, translating it yourself. So, let's go. The first sentence. We are walking in the park. Spacerujemy po parku. That's singular locative case. There are several beautiful parks in our city. W naszym mieście jest kilka pięknych parków. Genitive plural. New funds have been allocated to city parks. Nowe fundusze zostały przyznane miejskim parkom. Dative plural. The parks in my area are well maintained and clean. Parki w mojej okolicy są dobrze utrzymane i czyste. Nominative plural. Concerts are often organized in parks in the open air. W parkach często organizowane są koncerty na świeżym powietrzu. Locative plural. All right, that's everything that I've prepared for today. Uh, remember to visit my website and check out my book about noun declension. I hope that you've enjoyed this workout. If so, please leave a comment under this video, give it a thumb up and subscribe to my channel for more future content. Thank you for watching this video and staying here with me and see you next time.